calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I'm your host, Foot, joined by my co-host, Ryan. And we are here today to give you our mob review of My Hero Academia Season 7. So My Hero Academia Season 7 started May 4th, 2024, and ended October 12th, 2024, with a five-month run. And then they took a break for like maybe a week or two in July and then came back. Yeah. But um, as always, our mob reviews are spoiler filled. So if you have not seen My Hero Academia Season 7 or if you haven't finished the season in full, hit pause on this conversation. Make sure you like, comment, let us know you're coming back. And then, you know, do that. Come back. And let us know how you felt about the conversation. <laughs> then do that. Then and do, do that. Do indeed come back. <laughs> do indeed come back. But before we get into the mob review, how you doing today, Ron? I'm doing good. I know we're going to get into our overall opinions, but this season was indeed a beast. <laughs> For the am folks I, on the audio, we I... got the beast balls by the one company. Oh. That was the joke. I was not picking up what you were putting down at all. I picked up the beast ball and said this season was a oh, beast. The way that I got the, the camera set up, I can't see you. Hold it up again. So you just don't be looking at me. I be do reporting. be looking at you, but the way the way that I have the frames is like I'm I'm big and you're little, so I didn't see you. That's so that. crazy. That's so crazy. <laughs> I didn't That's see so crazy. You. I didn't see you put the, the ball up. You know what? You know, F it. My weekend has been fine. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. I finished eight out of ten classes for my MBA, so I got two more to go. How's your weekend been? Um, it's been chill. It's been chill. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. it's that weekend before you go on a big trip, so you're trying to get your life together, get everything situated. You I know. think people don't get that. You you clean your house up. You be like, I want to yeah, get everything watch squared clothes, away. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So when you come back, you just don't have to worry about that. You come off a of vacation, everything's already in order instead of coming back. And then you got, you got shit everywhere. And you're stressed out. Yeah. Now you want to go back on vacation because you then came back and your shit not together. <clears throat> Look, sometimes you need a vacation from the vacation, depending on how busy you was. We might end up needing that for this one. Oh, I'm already set. Mm-hmm. I was already set. That was in the yeah. It'd she be said crazy. Days were taken off. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But let's go ahead and get into this mob review. We got a couple hot takes. Um we're gonna start with the top and work our way in to my hero season seven. How did you feel about the season overall, and how did you feel about it in comparison to the past seasons? So this season, as well as the season before it, were pretty good. Like, overall, the experience overall was very good. We had some good high, a lot of high highs. We had some quite a few low lows, but the high highs were really dope. We got mm-hmm. some character expansion. We got to see more deep dives in the char- some of the side characters this season. We got mm-hmm. to see some returning cast members that you and I both fell in love with historically that we feel like needed more light. They didn't get much. And then we seen some that we're like, why are we even focused on them? But yeah. overall, the stories moving forward, they keep on making one for all. They're giving him the moderate treatment, in my opinion, to where I'm like, I'm, I'm worried about the ending. I think they're giving Shigaraki the moderate yeah. the moderate tr- treatment. I think um for one for all, I think his time is coming near cuz he has the whole like reverse thing coming on him, but I will agree that it's taking forever for him to reverse. I will give you that. Yeah. But I think Shigaraki is definitely getting the moderate treatment because it's just been like upgrade after upgrade after upgrade and like one of my Concerns, I, I would, maybe is a complaint at this point, is when he started doing that thing 
where like all his limbs, like his fingers and stuff were like multiplying. And he was like, this isn't a quirk. And I was like, okay, so what the fuck is this? If he that's not a quirk. His body was mutating to hold his quirk. But is it, is mutation not a quirk? I don't know. It's like the dude who looks like a spray bottle. Like, his ability to spray out, like, Windex is his quirk, but the fact that he's shaped like a spray bottle isn't the quirk itself. I guess. But wouldn't, when isn't the mutilation coming from the fact that he has a quirk? Like, Technic- people, but but people who don't have quirks can't do that, though. Can't do what Shigaraki did. A normal person who doesn't have a quirk cannot have their head mutated into a spray bottle. Yes, you're right. But like, for example, I think they try to make sense of it. Like, if you think about the animorphs, is that what they call like the lizard dude and oh, the yeah. dude who had the wings? Mm-hmm. Like, their bodies look different and they're shaped different. But what makes the quirk for, say, a spider looking animorph is the fact that he can shoot out webs and his fingers are sticky and everything. But the fact that his body is shaped like a spider, that's not a quirk. That's just his body at this point. But my thing is, so are you saying? That in my hero, that we can have the animorphs and they don't have quirks. I don't know. That's maybe what maybe that is true. Desire. Maybe that is true. Because think about season six when Deku was saving that bunny girl. She ain't had no quirk. She didn't, did she? Or we just never no. seen it? Either uh-huh. we didn't see it. I don't remember seeing her have a quirk. Or she doesn't have one. Either we didn't see it or she doesn't have one. <clears throat> and for the folks in the comments before y'all harass us if we're wrong please let us know we're not acting like we know it all but if that's the case i would agree with you i would think that's I, I think that's straight up i think if she ain't got one then yes yeah, some people just look like weirdos well no beast animals, animals. spray bottles if, if that's the case then i guess i can get behind the fact that shigaraki's fingers will multiply in times a thousand and he said there weren't no wasn't a quirk Mm-hmm. I think that's the part that just had me heavily confused because then I was like, okay, so what the fuck is that? Because even, because even, you know what? You know what? It doesn't explain. Because going back to the bunny girl, the animorph, mm-hmm. she can't multiply her fingers. So why is he? It's, I, we're not gonna, we're not gonna continue on this hill. I don't know. I don't know what the hell that is. But I was, but, but the point, the reason why we went on this tangent, the reason why we went on this tangent is because Ron brought up the fact that one for all, and I feel like Sugar Rocky are getting the moderate treatment. Cause I just I kind of feel- merged them in a one when I said one for all too, since he's technically like garnering that ability or whatever. I don't know. Well, didn't he break free from it? Cause that's why one for all is trying to get the Sugar Rocky. Cause he broke free from his control or whatever. Right. Doesn't Shigaraki still get his abilities or whatever, though? Like, isn't Shigaraki technically still gaining multiple quirks or whatever? Or He is, but I thought there was something where One for All was trying to take over Shigaraki's body. Yeah. And something happened to where, like, the connect- the connection broke or something, and Shigaraki's just... Shigaraki at this point, and One for All was like, no, I need to go and get to Shigaraki because something's not right. Like, the connection right. that we had is something's wrong with it. Okay. But the ability, one for all, like, all for one in Deku still does pass past down I think he still. Though. I think he still has okay. it. Okay. Folks going to be like, dang, did y'all even watch this season? I'm sorry. We y'all. did watch it. The thing is, is that this shit started in May. Shit started in May. 24 took a break, episodes. 24 episodes. And it's just been, and like Ryan said, it was a lot of highs. It was like, it was so much going on in this season. Mm-hmm. There was so much going on in this season. Like from the jump, like if we want to go backwards, like we still got to get into like Star and Stripe. We have to get into like the, how the whole thing even started. We're talking about midway towards the end. Like there's hella shit that happened before we even got to this point. Exactly. But um, it, it's so, it was solid though. I'll, I'll say that it was solid. I have my complaints, but we're going to get into those. I think this was a good follow up to season six because I would still say we still got to get to the last season, which they did announce is coming twenty twenty five. This is going to be the last season of My Hero, uh, given that the manga just ended this year. 
Um, I would still say season six is like the best season of My Hero. That it that shit went down. Season seeing six. Dark Deku was definitely peak for me. Like seeing like seeing how when everything finally came to a head, oh, they went in. It was nasty. Mm-hmm. And I think season seven was a good follow up to the aftermath <laughs> that came after that. And really just like no pun intended, but like really pushing everybody to their limits. Making them go plus ultra. Making them go plus ultra. <laughs> For real. And you just See, saw it in like in all of the battles and stuff. I think this this season might have been the roughest on class 1A. Like we've seen them get, you know, fucked up in previous seasons. But this right here with everybody, even the side characters uh, was getting they do. Yeah. I I know she's a fan favorite, but I don't be remember her name. Ochako son, or Chaco Chaco, whatever her. Uh, yeah, gra- Uraka. Your grab Uraka. That's what it is. Uraka. Even baby girl got busted up. I was like, you when, got busted up. Ooh. When she had her big fight against Toga, it's not my favorite of the season, but just mm-hmm. having her be in one of those intense moments where it's like. She is on the verge of death. Like Toga really stabbed her in her abdomen, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh." And that's the part where when you get a, where a knife hits there, it was in the part where people usually die from bleeding out. It's like she hit an organ. Yeah, it was. And, mm. Like, uh, Todoroki versus Dobby was crazy. The first fight in the second fight, um, Bakugo versus Shigaraki. Bakugo. Mirko, best genus, uh, Vermilion, and that ninja dude. Yeah, all of them versus Shigaraki was crazy. It was getting to the point I was like, Deku has to show up now. They getting their ass toe up so bad in this dome. And then, bro, it's it, now I will say that was one of the highs of this season. The fact that we was going through all of that in a dome and we're seeing how all of these little class 1A people and some of the class 1B or whatever with the newscasters mm-hmm. and the tech folks like working they in the even background. Pulled in, they, when, the, when the students showed up, I think this was season one, where they had, the, they had that exercise against that other school mm-hmm. and them kids showed up. I said, oh, they pulling out. They, they pulling out everybody. Everybody, please report to the battle. Yeah, like, it felt like a genuine... It did feel like a genuine war this season. But mm-hmm. the issue with war arcs, as someone who thinks the war arc in Naruto is poorly handled, it can get a little overwhelming, and some stuff can get lost. And I feel like that's what happened this season as well. Like, the Bakugo versus Shigaraki with everybody else on the side, like, once he went once he went full sweat mode and he started moving with the explosions or whatever, peak anime right there. Mm-hmm. Peak battle shown in moment right there but then other moments were a little eh but we got Todoroki and um Dobby. Toga Adabi another peak Toya another peak battle shown in moment and it was like that's why this season is just really solid I gotta give it solid yeah the the 1v1s mm-hmm. were nice Deku, Deku versus Shigaraki the, the pieces that we did see of Deku and Shigaraki cause they didn't give us a lot. Not at all. They're saving that they for the next season. Yeah, they're sa- saving that for the next season. They get, give us a lot of that. Like, most of those battles against Sugar Rocket was, like, against Bakugo and them. But Bakugo and the rest versus Sugar Rocket for sure. Endeavor versus All for One. Oh, that was good, too. That was a nice piece. You, We already talked about Toya versus Todoroki. Uraraka versus Toga. I wanted that All Might versus All for One fight to go on a little longer. I kind of wish that wasn't the last episode of the season. It, it honestly didn't. I mean, it hit, it hit, but it ain't hit as hard. It didn't hit for it to be a season season finale episode. Yeah. Like, I feel like we should have this... ended on a Deku Shigaraki go- cliffhanger. Uh, a cliffhanger. Versus- Exactly. Because mm-hmm. I was watching it and I was like, are we sure this is the last episode? Same. It's like the way they, the way that it was set up, I was like, I was thinking like, okay, maybe this episode is going to be a little bit longer. And then they ended it where they ended it and I was like, we're really ending season seven right here? Mm-hmm. 
Because it's like, I don't know. Like, I think, did they do a bad cliffhanger in the last season? Were we pissed off with last season's cliffhanger no. or am I tripping? The cliffhanger on season six was nice is because they introduced Star and Stripe. They started introducing getting allies right. from America. You're right. And we were hyped. And we could talk about this right quick as far as like returning characters. And we talked about this like episodes ago. Cause like I said, my hair has been going on for since like fucking May. But that cliffhanger for season six and then for Star and Stripe to show up and basically kick rocks by the third Trash. episode. Very I sad. was like, what the fuck? Very sad experience. We did not appreciate that because it's like, because at that same time, it was around that same time period where prior, we got introduced to Lady Noggin. Yeah. Fire character. And then, uh, look into the dark side of the My Hero world. Dude, we got Umbu Black Ops basically with Lady Noggin and Hawk and Hawks and all of them. We, she exploded in, the, in downtown New but York. But what I will say when they brought back Lady Nangan in season seven, I was not expecting that shit at all. I wasn't either. I was not expecting that shit. I, to go into like, cause I had a hot take about this. So just to go into the full of like side and returning characters that showed up to participate in this war, Lady Nangan, um, Mr. Gentle. I was not expect. I was like, I wasn't I expecting him he... to show up. The, like, yeah, like, I, my mind drew a blank. And I was like, who is this guy? And then I thought about it. I was like, oh. I did have to look it up. I was like, where did he come from? Wasn't that in a movie? It's like, oh, no. no he came with Deku he... was shooting air balls and stuff. Yeah, he was early in My Hero. But the reason I liked him showing up is because it got to the point. It's showing that part of the war where it's not just, like, heroes versus villains. It's like it's like you have certain villains that's like, okay, I'm not really with this. So if there's anything I can do to help, because y'all, they're tweaking out. I don't exactly. know who this I don't know who this <laughs> all for one not all for one, this one for all man is, but he's tweaking out. <laughs> what the young folks saying, these folks from Crash House, we ain't with he, all that. He's we- cra- he's crashing out. Him and his homeboy and they friends are crashing out. But I did like his return just for the fact because it's showing the lengths that the good guys have to go to to beat one for all. Mm-hmm. Like they have to side with villains. They have to do all these questionable things. Um, even if we want to go back earlier, the first half of the season where, um, what's his name? When they find out that he was working, that he was the traitor, that he was working for one for all. Oh yeah, it was with like, the belly do, belly light later yeah. man. It's um the things that people have been going through this whole time and the risks that you have to take and knowing who you can trust. And really what I liked about this season as well is that everybody got their due. Basically, mm-hmm. everybody's quirk had to be used in a way, had to be pushed in a way to get to the goal point. Yeah. And, and you want to know something? I, I, to go back to it, I know we're talking about the side characters. I do like how in... All Might's One for All Fight Part 2 when he had on that suit and it represented the characters of Class A. Mm-hmm. At first it was a little corny. Like it was it was like it's giving corny vibes, but I still like it because it's like, hey, give me your power, alluding to like Spirit Bone from Dragon Ball. Like Earth, give me your energy mm-hmm. or I'm powered by friendship and love. I did like that a little bit. I liked it. I feel like, and this might be like a stretch. This might be a bit far-fetched, but I noticed that all for one was using their powers in ways that I haven't seen them use their powers. So it was kind of like all for one using their powers in tandem and like showing like foreshadowing their full potential. Like this is really how you could use your quirk or this as a group, as a unit, this is how you guys can use your quirks in tandem. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's that's cold. Now, one of the side characters that did stick out to me was the girl who follows around Miss, Mr. Gentle. What's her name? Oh, the, the hacker, the hacker chick girl. I forgot her name. Yeah. I I do like the part that she played in terms of communicating and working with like those um folks at 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 the high school who actually like do the news broadcast and everything. They're yeah. recording everything that goes on. Cause like it was a even though some people might see that part as unnecessary. 
But I do like that it does, they do tie that into the story in terms of, oh my gosh, like we need to write, be the ones to write history because people need to see who's going to win this. The newscasters mm-hmm. are flying around and that is a little element that does get forgotten because it plays a big part even in real life wars. You got yeah. whoever documents the this, the winner and... writes history. Yeah. yeah. So I do like those little elements of my hero. And I do think some people that probably went over a few people's head of like, just get back to the fight. I think it was more so because everything's so centralized in Japan because, because let's talk about the conflict between star and stripe and her team at the beginning of the season, the higher ups in America didn't want her to go. That was like, whatever they, whatever they got going on in Japan, you don't have to worry about that. You don't need to worry about that. And because of who she is of being a hero and her connection to all might, she went anyway, but what would persuade, all of these other countries to give aid well you got you got to televise it exactly like y'all just can't look at it and be like hey this is just centralized to japan to show but like they're getting down like cities are being decimated toga that showed up and did this deaf man parade thing and it's 16 million twices running around like y'all are y'all seeing this shit like these folks are finna be like global terrorists. Like y'all think they're just working in Japan. If one frog gets to Shigaraki, they're like every nation will be in trouble. That's what I'm saying. So like in the fact that if they weren't recording it, y'all wouldn't even know how this came about. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't even know. You would just it would just be one frog and Shigaraki showing up at y'all front door. No answers where they came from. No answers of who was the resistance. What what did y'all try to do? No answers. Y'all have to fight off muscle. Exactly. But I do like I, I do like that extra element though, because it keeps it more it keeps it more grounded into reality. Like this stuff mm-hmm. would not just go this smoothly. Like if y'all expect other nations to help out, like this is some stuff that you would have to do. And I do like that my hero has that extra level of depth when attacking this war. Same. I also like just to like a part that a lot of people may have not cared about, but like small details I liked is when they had everybody in like the UA safe area. But then you find out that one for all also has spies in that area. And exactly. I was like, that's, I was like, that's real as fuck. Cause like it, if you thought that everybody in this one area is just like innocent civilians and we just chilling and stuff, like think again, it, it just it's- showed, it showed you how once again, the lens that both sides are going to to get to their outcome of what they exactly. want at the end of this. And it was multiple spies too. Like they had the light folks on, like folks ducked off on the phone and stuff. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, this this man like was really on his mafia stuff. Like he like has he a had, lot of people in fear of him. But he said that though, when he was, ex- I can't remember who he was talking to, but when he was explaining his thought process and how he has like the straight line and then, Here's all this possibility. Pa- he went to the branching, dude, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all those branching possibilities, like the way he's thought this forward. I was like, yeah, I just. They, on the hero side, they have surprised him a little bit. They have gotten the jump on him. But, like, just to go back to the fact that he has this, this planned out, he has been sitting in that straight jacket, in that chair. With that thing on his head, planning all of this stuff out. Like, this is, like, what recency bias might be kicking in, but this is full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood level of planning that he was doing in that chair. <laughs> that he was if, doing in that chair. If you watch Bleach, I would say he he think he's so scared. Huh? The way he'd be like, I know everything that's about to come. <laughs> but it was good, though. Like, it made you, I will say this. The show did do a great job at making one for all an intimidating villain at that. Him yes. as well as Shigaraki. And it does leave us as the watchers like, which is scary because I have trauma from this, wondering like, so how are they going to beat him? Like Deku already in overdrive of his abilities. One for mm-hmm. all has spies that's combating everybody. Like, okay, he's going to get handled. Cool. He's just going to disappear if All Might can hold him back. Cool. Mm -hmm. But Shigaraki is going to be an advanced version of him. Please don't pull nothing out y'all ass and just give Deku, like, godlike abilities out of the blue. 
I unless y'all make it sexy. But please, <laughs> please do it right. God like abilities, but make it sexy. Look, I'm just being honest because like there's a, it's hard. We've seen people do it badly, and we just like for those of you who are, ain't heard about it, go watch our um episode. We finally watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but we've seen an MC not pull anything out their butt, but stick to the power system and stick to the laws mm-hmm. of the land and the universe, and still beat an all powerful villain. But we've also seen the complete opposite in, say, Naruto. And I don't want that to happen. I'm worried. I'm super worried that this ending could get butchered. I'm curious to see. I'm saying. And while you were talking about it, I am interested to see how Deku is going to react with having all for one. Because it was at the end where All Might is just getting his shit rocked. And Deku could feel his connection to All Might, like, wavering. Exactly. So what happens? Does he get, would he get stronger if All Might kicks the bucket next season? Does Deku get, like, a, now that they're not sharing that same thread, would would Deku get a power up if All Might kicks the bucket? Well, I don't know, because I'm kind of confused about, all for one, one for all for one, because he gets the abilities of the holders who had quirks, but they essentially all kicked the bucket quick, right? Like yeah. if they already had a quirk because their bodies got overwhelmed. Well, since All Might doesn't have a quirk, doesn't that mean technically the quirk doesn't get better? Like All for One doesn't just get better. Okay, I I think that I think that was the explanation. Yeah, like I would assume that, that there's nothing, it should stay standardized. There's nothing added to the set. Like, if he kicks the bucket, nothing gets added to the set. Yeah, because it would have been different if if All Might actually had his own quirk and this, this was him kicking the bucket early because he already had one. Mm-hmm. And now Deku absorbs that, like that yeah. one missing dude who it took a minute for his abilities become, for Deku to access them. But I'm not sure. He could. The power of spirit, friendship, or hatred I, it, because All for One... My, what this is looking like to me for real, is this going to be some power of friendship... Deku yelling at Shigaraki, I know you! You're not like this. You just wanted some friends. You just needed a friend. Grab Shigura- my hand! Shigaraki, shut up! You don't know what you're talking about! I have friends. They live down the street and they called me ugly. Like, <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Multiple fingers coming out of his hand. I just feel like... Has a brain spasm and starts it, shaking. Was- I would say this, even if they do that, they need to damn sure give me a few episodes of a good ass whooping. Even yeah. even if we end, even if we end with friendship, I need a few episodes of a good ass whooping. I need some sparks. I need the colors. I need, I need, lim- I need, I need the lamps lim- split into push. cubes. Yes. I need mm-hmm. I need. I need. I need. I need. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I need some ass whooped, okay? Yeah, yeah. Cause like we said earlier, they barely showed. Out of everything we saw this season, we got a slither, sliver. There it goes, a sliver, sliver. Mm-hmm. of Deku versus Shigaraki. Yeah, and it's and it's like, and this season has been so long because now I'm trying to recuperate everything we've seen, like the Shigaraki against. Bakugo and everybody was so far until we got to that freaking like I want to talk about the lows now. Until we got to Luddy <laughs> tooting his booty up. I hate I like like I want to talk about some of these lows, bro. Like when we saw that, when we really saw that, that pissed me off. And then we got o- o- Sun um or Gravity going against um sh- a shoddy with the blood, and she's over here. Am I kawaii? I said what. <laughs> Am I cute? <laughs> what? Like, I, I, like what? To touch like, on why those, y'all adding this here? Why is this stuff here? Both to touch on those two before we get too far. To start with Vermillion sticking his ass up in Shigaraki's face, and we talked about this on a previous episode. That was such a one eighty from the emotion that we felt with Bakugo dying in the previous yeah. episode, and then we get to the next and. I understand that he was trying to buy time for Deku to show because Deku was on the way. We were getting to the point where Deku was on the way and your response to 
finding time, stalling, was to stick your ass up in this man's face. I and that's, I scream get, out his mama name or something. Say y'all had some spec ops. Do some research on this dude. Say his, his best up, friend's name. He, he stuck his ass up and said Peachy King. When if I was Sugar Rocky, I would have punched him in his ass right there. <laughs> I would have. Cause what's really going now? Now, given given it did work, it did stall him. Deku showed up, and then we got into the Deku versus Shigaraki episodes of the season. I granted it did work, but just for that to come after that whole sequence with Bakugo basically just put going plus ultra and uh, analyzing the patterns that Sugar Rock was moving through and all this stu- other stuff for him, they gave us that big flashback. Uh, with him and what all he wanted, you know, from All Might and how he looked up the All Might and his aspirations and stuff. For us to go through all of that, for y'all to come this next week to end with this man tooting his ass up, I was like, y'all, don't, this isn't serious. It, it, and that's what that's what it was. It felt like misplaced comedy. Because, like, these past two arcs, maybe it depends on how the mangaka sees it or who they're writing it for, who he was writing it for in mind. But, like... This arc, we're expecting this to be heavy. We're expecting this to be dark. We're expecting this to be a season of anime where if we go back and rewatch this, yeah, we're going to have to take our time because you're going to be crying and in your feelings for a long time. Mm -hmm. But like throwing that misplaced piece of comedy there just completely, it makes your brain feel like, wait, what am I supposed to be digesting and taking from this? It felt like Sexy Jusu against Kaguya. And I hate referencing to that. I hate referencing to that because it felt inappropriate. It's different if you're an anime like Fairy Tale or One Piece that stays consistently lighthearted and the lighthearted and heavy moments are like 50 50 in a way. Mm-hmm. But like that was just a misplaced piece of comedy. That could have been held off. That should have been done in season one through four, not, not six or seven. I would agree. I'm going to be real with you. That The first half of my hero wants shit funny. Want shit, want shit funny. I don't remember then, it making first, me laugh. This first, like these. Up until that point of My Hero Season 7 was shit funny. And now we got I, this man sticking his ass cheeks up front in Sugar Rocky. I, I draw a few blanks on thinking about old My Hero because I only think about the hot t- topics and hot points. But yeah, I don't remember My Hero being one of those animes that like makes me laugh. And like this moment did not make me feel that way. It just made me feel I, uncomfortable. I would agree. If it was misplaced, I think, though it worked, I just feel like maybe we could have we could have did anything else, but um, mm-hmm. going into Uravity versus Toga, I would say that I didn't feel the emotion for this battle because I their whole setup that whole setup of Uravity versus Toga always felt like they're doing this because Deku has Shigaraki, so let's give Toga to Uraraka. I can see that. I can see that Deku has... Yeah. Like, Tod- and- like Todoroki has Dobby, Toya, his whole situation. Bakugo at... Going now, Bakugo is Bakugo versus Shigaraki. And then it was always Deku versus Shigaraki and all of, all of that other stuff. And then if they wanted to put her to the front, if they had... I feel like they're choosing her to be the woman character in My Hero Academia that they are pushing to the forefront. And because we're yeah. pushing you to the forefront, we need to give you an arch, ne- arch nemesis. And your arch nemesis is going to be Toga. And they were setting that up. And I, being honest here, did not care for the setup in the previous six seasons. And then when we finally got to this high battle between the two in season seven, I didn't feel it because I didn't care. And that's my thing. I feel like they didn't, like they added build up. But for me, okay, Shawty like blood, and instead of her parents just like giving her blood donors blood to like drink on or sip on, okay, she was abandoned. And then Er Ravity, what's your obsession with her? I want to talk to her about love. I want to talk to her about my love for Deku. And I hate to say it. Now that I've been spoiled from by the manga readers about their relationship, can I say that? Say what? About what the manga spoilers, or should we keep that to the side? 
I don't even know it. So I'm going to tell you no. I don't know what you're okay. talking about. Okay, I will, I'll leave it alone. But because the manga readers kind of spoil something about the end, but regarding Deku and um, Uravity, that kind of fell flat for me. And then I'm just watching. I'm like, so your whole purpose of chasing her was because you liked her smile and because you just wanted to tell her that she looked cute and you wanted to talk to her about boys because you saw that she liked Deku too. I'm like, that's 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 this. You got I... stabbed in the stomach for that. It wasn't she hurt your family. It wasn't you're you're mad that she went down this path and is killing innocence. And none of that. She's kawaii. I think she just wanted her to feel normal. Because I feel like Toga's villain story is that everybody looked at her as abnormal. And then she joined the League of Villains, and then ain't nobody really care like what you had going on. You could choose your own destiny. You don't have to worry about people shunning you. Like, you can do what you want to do with, like, no backlash. And then she really um, buddied up with, like, Twice. And then, you know, we all know what happened twice. At the end of season five, I believe that was season five. No, season six when Hawks got his ass in. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, I think I felt it as Uravity Uraraka just wanted her to feel like, like, yeah, you can be a normal girl, you know? You don't, hey, you don't have to do, you don't, you don't have to do that. You're just a girl. You don't have to do all of this. But even... <laughs> I don't even know where that phrase came from, but so it's, many of the women in my life are using that now. I'm just I'm a girl. Just, I'm just what a does girl. that mean to What does that mean to me? <laughs> what does that mean? It, it, you wouldn't understand because you're not just a girl. The girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. And then the way y'all pronounce it, I heard <laughs> I was, someone said, my, I'm just a goyle. I said, like a gargoyle? What are you, <laughs> what are you saying? I'm just a girl. I'm just a goyle. I was like, what, what are y'all saying to me right now? What does this mean? But I just felt like that's that's what it felt like to me, that Uravity was just trying to sympathize with her and was like, oh, she's just a normal girl who's misunderstood. And I just want to talk to you about, like, girl stuff. I want to talk to you about boys. Like, who do you have a crush on? I want to tell you, hey, girl, you look cute. Your smile is so cute. Whatever. That's what it felt like to me. But it also just felt like, like, we needed this big fat ass battle for that. For that, that and that's like, what I'm every, saying. Like, every, like everything y'all have been building up, we're building up to just to tell you, like, hey, girl, you know, don't even worry about it. We can just stop this. You don't have to be like that. We can go get, you know, something to eat, and we can just talk about Deku. And that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe maybe I need to meet some Uravity fans because I know she's like a fan favorite, especially with that Dream Con and stuff. But I'm like, do y'all look like that? Are y'all happy that she was written off to like something like she got she got stabbed in the freaking kidney, bro? Mm-hmm. Like she took a blow to the stomach to say I wanted to call you cute. I wanted to say that you're a good that you I like you and you could have all my blood if you ever wanted. Like that's what we wrote it off to. Not I I am a hero and I stand against everything you're doing because it is my job to protect people and you're hurting them and I just cannot let that fly and I feel responsible for your your idiocracy because I've seen you at the competitions. Like nothing, nothing like freaking um what would be the word? Nothing honorable or astute like some of the other characters in the show. You get it's because you're cute. And I want to talk about Deku to you. Like I feel like that was a waste of Aravity's character. I but maybe, but I also maybe she was just trying to relate to her on a level to where they could understand each other. It all goes back into like my theory of Toga is Uraraka's Shigaraki. Yeah. To where we're getting to the point now that Deku wants to take down Shigaraki in a way that doesn't doesn't involve flat out like violence. And then we got a little bit of that where we start getting a little bit into Shigaraki's conscience about him being a child and his friends and stuff like that. And I really feel like they just might be like, they trying to do some talk no jutsu. Like this right, like this right here is was some talk no jutsu. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's falling flat for me. Because even though I get it, like don't get me wrong, and, and oh my gosh, we just watched Full Metal. We've seen what happens when strong MCs 
are like, we don't believe in killing and everything else, despite the fact that a lot of people are, you know, kicking the bucket in the background and blah, 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 blah. But there's ways to do it right, Full Metal Alchemist. And then there's ways where you're going to be a little divisive in terms of how it's received by your fans, like what my hero is doing right now. I just don't get it. I just don't get some of it. And it could also be, let's not ignore the fact that they're still kids. They are. They are still children. And I want to say this is still like maybe like their first year or so at UA. Like all of this is going on and they're fresh, like they're fresh in the school. Like they're not seasoned like upperclassmen or anything. And I think some of the ways that they're attacking certain issues are because of the fact that they're kids. Like maybe if this had been like Hawks, or something versus Toga, one gonna be no talk, no juice. I don't care. We've seen how Hawks I, move. Right. I don't care if you cute. I don't care who you like. I don't give a damn who your your man candy Monday is. You're finna you're finna go. <laughs> MCM? I forgot about those. <laughs> you're finna go. WCW Woman Crush Wednesday. That, crush. Like if if that if, <laughs> if that had been like anybody else, if that had been like any of the older heroes, the seasoned heroes. Toga wouldn't got no no words, no talk, no speech, none of that. But I think the fact that it's gravity, I think mm-hmm. it's because that they're still teenagers and she's a teenage girl and Toga is still a child. So I feel like that was the only way that they could relate to each other, that they could talk to each other on that level. To talk of something so nuanced as of boys and am I cute and do you like my smile? Am I kawaii? I was so. I'm sorry, Foop. I was so disgusted. <laughs> I was like, I, I get was, it. I, was I get so disgusted. it. <laughs> I get it. But I think some of some of the reasons why, and we can even go back to Vermilion sticking his ass up in Sugar Rocky's face. I think it all just trickles down to the fact that these are children in these yeah. in these warlike situations. Some of them have never been in intense like they understand what's going on but they don't understand the gravity of it because let's talk about that one episode where um old girl who got the the earplugs yeah as her quirk and she caught herself trying to go after all for one he ripped her ear clean off i was like i I I like like, that scene and i feel like y'all understand what's going on but you don't understand what's going on like but i here's... like like you're looking at it like it's us against one for all and then you go up to one for all he didn't rip your whole damn ear off. that's your whole damn quirk how are you gonna use that shit now but that's what i like about that scene like scenes like that because we are truly in a world ending war like this is a crisis like multiple people have kicked a bucket at this point like, mm-hmm. scenes like that, in my opinion, are what are giving the students and making this more realistic and relatable a revelation. Like, yo, our lives truly are at risk. This, we're standing up for our friends because we're heroes. That ain't always going to fly. Our lives are at risk. And I think that's what I'm, that's why I like Bakugo's potential death. We don't know. He might come back. You never know I how think he, I him. think he's I think he's coming back. I think when they put in the old dude was like, I'm going to go inside his heart. And do the resuscitation stuff. I think he's going to come back. But that's what I'm saying. If, like, you want to know what would have made me appreciate the Uravity scene a little bit more? If her and Toga died together. Like, if they passed away together and then every... Because most of the folks don't even know about Bakugo right now, if I remember correctly. I don't think that was communicated over the intercoms or whatever. Like, Deku no, it's and only everybody the people, else. I just think it's only the people who are in the dome. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, if that happened to Aravity and Toga, even, like, we got that, they held hands, and Aravity's like, I will see you in heaven, and Toga's like, I may not see you, uchako son. I'ma go into hell because I'm a bad person. Like, whatever, whatever. And then everybody in class 1A is able to have that revelation, like, yo, this is real. This, Mm -hmm. I know we want to be heroes, but sometimes it comes to life and death, because Hawks had that conversation. Hawks had that discussion in his mind about, yeah, I had to do it. Just yeah. it's not all about justice and who's good and who's bad. I Sometimes think, it's about what I want out of, as a result. If you, I think, if you wanted 
class 1A or the kids to have that mindset, they should have took somebody out season six. That too. They should have took they should have took somebody out season six. Cause then it really it really would have set in that, oh, this is not this is not a training exercise. This is a S class mission. Like this, mm-hmm. this it's getting real. I feel like they should have did that in season six or early in season seven. Like somebody should have got their ass did in early this season. And then everybody be like, oh shit, we got to lock in. Exactly. Cause I, I get it. It's a shonen. We have to remind ourselves shonen are geared towards young boys at the end of the day. They're not geared towards adults majority of the time. But at the same time, we've seen other shonens do a better job at it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what disappoints me about My Hero, because it always gets so close. In my mind, it gets so close to being up there. Mm -hmm. And then there's certain moments that just make me go, nope, it's not top tier like these other battle shonen animes I like. It's just not. I do want to talk about this, though. And this is not a low. I I, I really want to talk in detail about the Todoroki versus Toyo fight. And then the second piece of it, where it's basically the whole Todoroki family trying to stop Toyo from self-destructing. I think those two sequences were very well done. Like they the were. whole, we were hitting the climax of the whole Todoroki family conflict at that point. We we finally, first, first sequences that were finally getting the battle of the prodigal son versus the um excommunicado abandoned prodigal son son. like the first like i was the first Mm -hmm. and and now you're here and i i just thought that sequence was fire the emotion was there and it was just like the way dobby's fire was going and and i really like the todoroki family conflict because it parallels a lot with avatar the last airbender if we want to look at zuko in the whole that. in the whole royal family type thing with like the siblings the dad the reason the the reason why the Todoroki family exists very closely parallels of why Zuko and Azula exist mm-hmm. with like find trying to find the right person that would give us the strongest bloodline and, and like stuff like that and then do you have like the siblings and like trying to make one into the best? Oh, you're not cutting the mustard. Get out of here. Now you got the other one, the blue fire and all of like the craziness and all of that goes there. But like that hit and then that second sequence, because it also plays into like Endeavor's whole like redemption arc. And like finally, and, and I like the fact that it didn't go where, oh, I messed up. Let me come save you, or I save you. We can be a big happy family again. No, like this, this what this big fuck up that you did, you're gonna feel it. Like Toya dying was like, yeah, there is no full redemption for this situation. You're gonna have to sit with that L. Funny enough, at this point, if someone had to ask me whose stories were done the best in my hero, I would say Endeavor and Hawks are easily the top two. Like, if we can decide who's number three, maybe after Shigaraki and Deku are done, but their stories are top two. And and Endeavor, like you said, for the past three seasons, when did we get revealed that you are a piece of shit and, and Toya basically revealed that to the world? Was that season five? That was season six. When he that was made, in season six. When he made that video and he put that yeah. stuff on his hair so it went from black to white. Yeah, like we've... Like, that was basically the moment where it really sunk in. Like, hey, people are kind of aware that you suck. Yeah. And Endeavor is, like, a fan surrogate into, like, partially what is a dark side in the My Hero universe. Like, this is still Japan. We have some of those traditional elements that go into the culture that I like that they introduce us to. This man married this woman strictly out of functionality. Mm-hmm. I am trying to create the ultimate court kid. And they alluded to that during these war episodes when baby girls in the camera flying around like, hey, there is a theory that these quirks get stronger and stronger and it's worse. And there are people like Endeavor who are purposely trying to create these pro- pro- strong mm-hmm. quirks for their um, lineage. I think that's fire. I like the way that they stuck to it. I l- agree with you. I like that once it got the, once the heat came, he tried to prove himself against that Nemu. I mean, you did I... 
we still dislike you a little bit. He's still been fighting against um all for one one for one for all and yeah. giving it his all, like getting beat down, stomach getting messed up, like Buddy from JJK. Ain't cutting, still ain't cutting the mustard. Look, still, we like you, but bro, you ain't even beating him yet. You ain't done. You are not all might. And it's the fact that he's fighting against that in his head. He's going through emotional turmoil. We see it, and you still don't even win in the end. That's you what still I like. lost your eldest son. Like that's that was what I fire. like. That's what I like. Very that's good. what I really like. Like, because in hindsight, if Toya, if this had been the alternate My Hero universe and Toya was like, you know what? I don't want to do this. Y'all my family. Let me calm down. Let we me all, fight alone. We all hug. Uh, uh, let's hug. We got some things to work out. But right now, let's, you know, let's fight for the good cause. In an alternate universe, that would have been like to me the ultimate redemption for Endeavor if he would have gotten that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Toya stuck to his guns and was basically like, no, fuck y'all. Like, fuck y'all so hard that I'm going to off myself. I'm going to self-destruct. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's that's raps for you. And it's realistic. Like, look at what Endeavor has done to his family. Like, he's trying. Don't get it twisted. He's putting in that work. But, I, he's, but, done, but he's done everybody. so much. But he's done so much damage. You ruined that family. Like, Todoroki, a lot of people say he's a flat character. And I do feel like he got flat over time, and I don't appreciate it because I loved him in the beginning, first two or three seasons. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like, look at everything this man has been through. The reason he feels so flat, because his emotions have been shut down. Look at what his mama did. And he yeah. recognizes that it's not her fault, but it still happened. Yeah. Look at his dad. Of course that man ain't got no feelings. That man got trauma. Yeah. His and dad trauma. And, like, how do you deal with the fact of, like, all of these people looking up to your dad at first as the number two hero, but now as the number one hero, but in the back of your mind, you have all of this trauma, everything that happened in your childhood. Now, on top of that, adding to what he did to your oldest brother, who you thought was, like, dead and gone this whole time. And it's like, how do you balance those two perceptions? And you you yourself still want to be a good guy. You mm -hmm. still yourself want to be nice. And all of your closest friends are going through this BS. Like, yeah, you're probably going to compartmentalize all them emotions and just sit there and be like, damn, I'm depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, maybe, it's, it's a realistic response. And, and, and I also think it's like Todoroki or Shoto could have easily followed Dobby's path based Easy. on, like, his backstory. But I think the fact that he chose to not too much focus on the trauma and just focus on the one thing that made sense. Like I want to be a hero. I don't want to be like you and I want to be a hero and him just focusing and putting all of his energy into that allowed him to excel as he had instead exactly. of just trying to sit with it. And like, I don't know. Yeah. Just sit with it. Like I, I get yeah. it. That at like as the seasons went by, he wasn't as like intriguing as every character. But I just feel like it just goes to the fact that he has a lot to deal with. Yeah, he just like he like he's dealing with all the trauma. He's dealing with the fact that everybody's looking at his dad as the number one hero. This war is going on in the back end. You've got you Bakugo and Deku have been chosen as the big three, and the only person you can go talk to on how to like you know, plus ultra and get to that level is your dad. So now you got to put, now you got to put something else to the side to deal exactly. with the fact that you got to train with him. I just, I just feel like it's a lot. It was a lot going on for him. And, and even he, though you're mad at your a, brother, and he's still a child and he's still a child. And even though you, you're mad at your brother, cause he's a villain, he's still your blood brother who you heard about that, you know, existed and you're over here like, dang, yet another thing that my father did to hurt me and my family. Yet another thing he did wrong. Like, it's it's crazy. And yeah. it's like, Endeavor, another thing with Endeavor, even though he's going through this redemption, the only person supporting him is Ox. Like, yeah. the only person on his side, for real, like, All Might's, like, kind of there, but All Might is also the person you was envious of, so it don't hit the same. Hawks is the one person who's like, I admired you. I see the hero that I wanted you to be, and I'm here for you. And Hawks is over here giving and, out every feather to fight for to help you out. And then, and then it could also be that Hawks wasn't there. Because if we look mm -hmm. at Hawks' backstory, 
there's there wasn't a real opportunity for him to look that deep into what was going on inside of that household. Exactly. So like he only saw like public perception. And then it was like, yeah, I know you did some fucked up things, but like this public perception that I have of you is so heavy that it's overshadowing. And also Hawkson did some dark stuff too, being that he was in the Ambu Black Ops. Right. So he's over here. He's like, listen, I had to do some trash too, but you are still a hero. And I want you to be an example for these young, this next generation. Yeah. But saying all that to say is that I think they did, they played out that story that Todoroki family very conflict, well. they played that out very well, leading up to that big moment in season seven with Toya, where they all of them had to come together and stop Toya from basically self destructing and like messing the club up for real. Yeah, like if I had to say what was the best moment this season, off of everything that makes it what it is i would say it was that endeavor versus toya slash todoroki in the family fight yeah that made like that, that made me the... that made me tear up me too that made me, me tear too up i was like too. i feel this um you say you had a couple more low moments did you know what they were mr what bounce man with mr. the space Gentle. bubbles unnecessary he did his big one though he stopped the thing from falling into the ocean he did his big one i didn't even know that man existed i'm sorry i forgot i did forget about him i'm gonna be real for that to be like oh we had to call in some reinforcements or we had to side with some villains and it's mr gentle and me like having to stop and be like okay who is this for real i feel it but he did come in and do his big one though (laughs) and and it's not that it was a low other moments it's just a lot like i'm I'm glad that the 2a or whatever kids came into play i'm glad that we got the dude being trained by Izawa since they were standing on um mm-hmm. gargantua the monster that was yeah, like running Shino. around the surf yeah like not i'm Shino. glad that we're... that's the dude from naruto what is that man's name purple hair i'm gonna call him purple hair purple hair we got purple hair shinzo on big... shinzo on big gorilla monster that serves um all for one yeah one for, one for all i feel like these moments aren't bad but it's easy for them all to get overshadowed because it's so much going at once mm-hmm. but it is a war arc so you gotta recognize that a lot is going all at once yeah. but it's like when you throw in the vermilion moments and all this other trash it makes my mind get discombobulated because i'm like what am i watching right now Agree. Like, what should I be personally focused on as from a strategic perspective as a fan? Like, this is happening, so this is what connects to that and blah, 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 and that's what I need to be keeping up with. Because, like, even at your, even at 100 man, 1,000 man death parade, whatever, mm-hmm. despite that it was going to affect everybody and it's hurting everybody, and that was basically a shift in the war, it got, I don't want to say belittled, but the f- solution to it and the main focus was Kawaii between your Ravity and Toga. Well, I mean, she is the one that started it. So they were gonna have to get to her anyway to stop it. Yeah. They just needed they just needed to figure out which one was her. And I feel like setting it up that Uraraka was the one to figure it out. And to me, it made sense. Now everything after that is debatable, but I feel like her being to one to figure out that this twice is actually Toga. Let me lock in on that. I feel like that made sense to me. It made sense. It's just the execution and everything that came into play made it a little confusing. Like it was just interesting. Like certain episodes made me go from tearing up with Endeavor and his family to what's going on here. And that happened too frequently. Like I kept mm-hmm. felt like I felt like as a fan and as a watcher, I was switching back and forth too much. Too much context switching. Yeah. I feel that my only argument is that I don't see a good place in season seven to where they could have split it off to mm-hmm. make it a bit to not be so event after event after event after event. I don't know where they could have broke this off and been like, okay. We'll save this next part for season eight, and then season nine would actually be the finale of My Hero Academia. Like the way that some of those story elements were progressing, even the parts where we're like, okay, what's going on here? I feel like 
I don't know where we would have split this up to where it would have made a where it wouldn't have felt like that. Funny enough, the only way that could have happened is if um UA and team's original plan worked with everybody being separated into their individual spaces. Yeah, but that, that was like early. Up. Exactly. That Once was that early though. Diminished. And and I feel in if they had did that, my complaint would have been why didn't y'all just tack this on to the end of season six? Fair. That would have been my complaint. If if I that's your that. so, if that's your solution, my complaint would have been this could have been the in the season six. I could see that. Because if the first three episodes of season seven is going to be old girl star and stripe kicking the bucket after y'all set up this whole cliffhanger at the end of season six, you could have just tacked that on. Fair. Now, my only other question, making sure I'm not getting the seasons confused. This was the season where Hero Killer Stain was still randomly placed in certain moments, right? Or am I, I getting that, that confused? That was like, six. Didn't he t- that was, that was six. six. Because you, so he because didn't show up again in this season talking to mm-mm. All Might? Okay. That was season six when he showed up talking to All Might. Because Is he going to be Might, relevant you, again? I don't know. But it was season six because you remember that All Might was beginning to feel a little bit frustrated that Deku wasn't listening to him because that's when Deku had went rogue. Yeah, and he and he wasn't listening to nobody, and then All Might was kind of feeling like discouraged, and that's when Stain had came up to him and got his motivation back up. That was six. A piece of me is wondering where is, is he going to be. It was that the length to his relevance, or is he going to become more relevant in this final season? Because I'm like, he was the big bad, one of the big bads in season three, was it? It's so, was that, was that the, so long. Whatever the that tournament arc was, that's when he was in there. Was that two then? I, I think, think that two was season three. two. But yeah, it's like since since he has that legendary history of being a big bad and they already brought back other people and we know that he is actually back. I am waiting, like, are we gonna do something with him? Is he gonna be relevant? Or was he just some minor, like, mercenary guy that, hey, he gave a motivational quote to All Might and that's it. I don't know. I what I can say for sure, and we can step into theories for season eight. And um, we're, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, is that we're approaching the end of mm-hmm. My Hero Academia. I feel like season eight is going to be real one for all and Shigaraki heavy. The fact that they've now defeated Toga and that Deaf Man's Parade thing is over. I'm not sure what everybody else is going to focus on unless unless Deku can't handle Shigaraki they break out of that dome or something happens with All Might and All for One that we gotta call in reinforcements I don't really know what's unless unless they're just gonna keep going into episodes uh where they're in different parts of the city trying to stop unrest and round up all of these villains and things like that. I don't know what's going to be like the heavy focus other than those two. That probably wouldn't even be, that probably wouldn't even be worth showing though. That's what I'm saying. Cause I know, I know we got, we got to finish them off and then they have to give time to like the resolution, like everybody coming down off of this war, counting our losses, what's next, things like that. Um, Future perspective, like the last couple anime that I've watched that go in the end, they always do some fast forward, flash forward to the future. Exactly. Where everybody's so, at set five years later. Right. So I don't. I for that character specifically, I don't know where he would come into as far as season eight. I could see that because now. We're at the point where all of the main people have been shut down. Like we know that All Might's gonna lose this fight. Either he's going to Hawks is done. His... Hawks is done. All oh. one for all took his shit. Hawks is done. That's what I'm saying. Hawks is down. Endeavor's down. All Might is about to be down. Um, all of the one A class. Aravity's down. Eda's down. Todoroki's down. Baku goes down. Uh, Dark Shadows down. Yeah. Baby girl shooting tents and metal and juices out of her chest. She's getting exhausted. Electric yeah. dude's getting exhausted. Yeah. Like, this is everybody. Like, unless they pull, like, one random side character like Hero Killer saying, all we can really sit down and do is watch Shigaraki and Deku and a few people who get, like, a burst of energy get up and try to help. Yeah. Like, that's it. I think like, at I'm- this point, now that we've gotten rid of, like, the side 
elements like on the villain side, Toga's down, Dobby's down. That the twice lizard there, man is the down. lizard man, lizard man is down. So like now everybody can focus their energy on supporting fighting against one for all in Sugar Rocky. And I think that's where the heavy piece of season eight is going to be at. Same. Same. Which is I mean, we're coming to an end. Like I'm We're there. Yeah. We are coming to the end of My Hero Academia. And I would say that these past two seasons have been doing a good job of building up to like that ending. That like shit's finally getting real and now I just want to see how they're gonna come down from all of it. Now some people are gonna ask food. In a couple of episodes, we've alluded to this where we've been like, even Antoine was on it, where it's like this season of My Hero or My Hero in general, it's hard for us to attach to it. It's hard. We ain't put it in our top 10. Everybody go back and watch. Um, We expose our top 10 anime. Ooh, that might have been a spoiler. But still, though, we did talk about My Hero. People are going to say, well, y'all made this season sound really good. Why isn't it like up there for y'all, especially as a battle shonen? I just think... I don't think I had a real a, a full attachment to my hero to begin with. Like I liked the concept and what they were setting up, but it's just I don't know what it is about my hero. It it could be the fact that sometimes it just felt I won't say too lighthearted, but like we didn't step into like very heavy themes with some with with my hero at times. Like, it was, like, one of those seasons that were, like, the first half of the season was them doing some training exercise at school. So, like, while I enjoyed the setup between season six and season seven, and I have no doubt that they're going to keep this momentum going for season eight, that's only three out of the eight seasons that I'm really giving you guys flowers for. But, Foop, the fans are going to say... You're a fan of fairy tale. You, Ryan, Antoine, King, and Ralph seem to like animes that are fun and lighthearted. You're also me, a comic me, book nerd, tell, and this let, is a comic book sh- anime. Let me tell you something about fairy tale. When fairy tale got in it, fairy tale got into their shit. Fairy tale got into made their me tear up quite a few. Fairy tale gets gets into their shit, even though they're lighthearted and they're goofy. When it's time to get down, it's time to get down. They they gets they gets down. I, I agree. I I I feel like the word if I had to put it in one word is inconsistency. That's what my hero does. Like this, these have been very consistent moments in these past two seasons with some inconsistent moments. But I feel like inconsistency is why my hero just for some reason doesn't stick. It just doesn't stick with me as like a top tier anime, let alone top tier battle shonen. It just feels like it's good. Some people are going to love it. Some people, and a lot of people are just going to think it's I, and it's worth. I don't hate it. Like I don't yeah. hate my hero. Like I still watch. I still kept up. I think I fell off. I think I fell off that one season where they where that first half was just them doing the training exercise. I think that's the one area that I fell off on my hero. But I I caught I caught back up. But I would say that even though we talked about some of these high moments. To me, personally, my hero hasn't really hit me in the chest to where I was like, oh, this is my top 10. Like, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the watch, but it hasn't left an impact on me. And and that's the thing, that too. I have not rewatched my hero yet. Like, Attack on Titan, it just ended. Before Attack on Titan ended, I rewatched it multiple times. Fire Force, JJK. Demon Slayer, if I'm doing the new gen, new gen battle shonens. The one day I accidentally watched the first episode, turned on the first episode of My Hero Academia, and I got irritated within the first five minutes. I'm like, I'm never watch, I'm not watching this. I'm like, I have not felt the desire to rewatch this anime as long as it's been going. And that's just a sign that something in me just does not hold it to that caliber for some reason. Yeah. I don't think I would rewatch My Hero, but. I'm these past two seasons and I'm looking forward to how they ended all with season eight have been like, okay, my hero y'all with the shits. I wasn't Mm -hmm. expecting that from you. 
okay. didn't know you're capable of this. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't familiar with your game. But here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. I I think season six was really the turning point for me with my hero. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, oh, okay, so now now we're getting to the real shit. Exactly. So, I do I do commend them on these past two seasons. I'm looking forward to season eight, but I just feel like overall, I it just hasn't mm-hmm. left like a a impact on me. Yeah. And that's just my personal opinion. If My Hero Academia is your favorite anime and you'll die on that shit, you're right or die for it, by all means, do so. Power to you to give us more reasons take, to take why my, we should appreciate it. Take my... Right. Get, maybe maybe we're missing something. Let us know what we're missing. Mm-hmm. But other than that, you take my opinions with a grain of salt. Like, we still here watching it, talking about it. We didn't need a whole mob review for it, so it's not like we fucking hate it, so... Exactly. It's like we admire... It's. It's just an interesting place. I'm not. I don't want to stay on this too long. It's just in an interesting place in terms of my affinity and feelings for it. Yeah. But and I don't know. I don't know if it would change once it's over. I think I will appreciate the journey for sure. Given yeah. on like where Class One A started, where Deku started, and where where they're ending, and like seeing the the growth and everything, I would definitely appreciate it. But. Hmm. But that's um that's all I had. You got anything else, Ron? Mm. Shout out to my hero as the manga for ending. Shout out to all the fans of the franchise. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And let's look forward to what new anime are coming out in the future in mangas now that we're coming to the end of a generation for real. Yeah. But with all that being said, we'll go ahead and shut this down. So if you enjoyed this mob review and want to stay up to date with more mob reviews that are coming in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment. Let us know how you felt. Once again, Ryan, I want to thank you for joining me on another episode of the Blurred Mob Podcast. And to everybody who watched or listened, if this is your first time or 50th time checking us out, it is always appreciated. To stay up to date with the mob on our social media platforms, make sure you follow us on Instagram at the Blurred Mob Pod. We're on Twitter at the Blurred Mob. And you can find us on TikTok and Facebook at the Blurred Mob Podcast. And if you would like to support the mob, make sure you check out those links in the description to our affiliate links and Kofi link. And um, those donations go towards equipment, software, and everything we do to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. Excuse me. Part, part of my part language. <laughs> part of my language. Excuse me, Hunter Hunter. Put my put my pinky out, Hunter Hunter. <laughs> look, 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 pink out when you drink your water. Uh, it's Hunter Hunter. Hunter. It's Hunter Hunter.